Let's review complete dominance in Mendelian genetics. Uh, everything that we've been working on so far has been dealing with the fact that, of course, parents are still both going to contribute an allele towards a genotype. In other words, you would get one letter or gene from each parent. Remember the laws of segregation state that each parent will pass on one of their own alleles for each gene. And everything up till now has been about complete dominance, meaning that one form of a gene will always cover up a different form of a gene. So for example, dealing with the coat color in cattle, if you were to cross a homozygous black coat with a homozygous white coat, all of the offspring would show the black phenotype. Even though they may carry this recessive allele, all the offspring would show the dominant phenotype. 100% of the genotypes of the offspring would be heterozygous for black and 100% of the phenotype would actually have the black coat color. So now we're going to introduce a different type of gene interaction. I want you to remember that you still are going to inherit a pair of genes. One comes from mom, one comes from dad. In other words, one allele is going to come from mom and one is going to come from dad. But they aren't always necessarily dominant and recessiveness. The second type of gene interaction is called incomplete dominance. And it's just like what it sounds, how it sounds. The traits are equally dominant. In other words, the genes or alleles are, com are equally dominant. So this is like mixing paint. If you are going to mix red paint with white paint, you get an intermediate phenotype, which is pink. So here, we're actually going to use uh, all capital letters, and now you get to mix letters, whereas before, we always said use capital and lowercase, now you can use a letter that's going to stand for the actual trait or the phenotype. So notice that the homozygous condition of RR is going to be for red, and the homozygous WW will be for white. Why? Because this individual received an allele for whiteness from both parents. However, if you receive the heterozygous, in other words, you receive different alleles from each parent for the petal color, you'll get an intermediate. In this case, it would be pink petals. So an incomplete dominance, what you see here, of course, is a Punnett square. But don't let that trick you, don't let it fool you, don't let it confuse you. You run the Punnett square exactly like you would any time. You just have to decide how the genes are going to be expressed and interact. So for the carnations, you're directed to cross a homozygous red with a homozygous white. And it tells you that these alleles are incompletely dominant. Now the offspring, which are expressed or shown inside the Punnett square, you're going to see some different interactions. Instead of this heterozygous showing one color or the other, it shows a brand new phenotype. So in this particular cross, all of the offspring would be heterozygous, but now the heterozygous means that there'll be a new phenotype, in this case, pink. So now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video here and I would like you to work out this problem. What would happen if you crossed two pink carnations? Putting them into a Punnett square, what would be the genotype and phenotype ratios of the offspring? Is this what you got? By crossing two pink carnations, the potential offspring, the probability of the offspring, would be that 25% of the offspring should be red 
and 25% of the offspring should be white. But 50% should then be pink. Another type of gene interaction is very, very similar to incomplete dominance. Instead of incomplete dominance, it's now called co-dominance. And instead of mixing, they are actually both completely shown. So in cattle, for instance, um, if you have a white coat and a red coat, the offspring, instead of being a pink coat, where actually the hairs are a different color than either of the parents, now as you can see, this, this uh, offspring has hairs that are completely white and hairs that are completely red. When doing crosses with co-dominance, you can see that it looks a little goofy in how these are uh, noted. And really what it is, it doesn't, you don't have to use a superscript. You don't have to use a superscript. In this case, the R is the superscript. But you might often see them written this way. And it really is going to be put into a Punnett square the exact same way. So this one's actually done for you. But here's, let's work through the problem. They want you to cross a heterozygous roan with a heterozygous roan. So notice again what that really means is that the parents are heterozygous, meaning they have two different genes in their genotype or two different alleles in their genotype. So what you'll see is that you'll still use a Punnett square the same way. 25% should have red coats. 25% should have the white coat and 50% are going to be heterozygous. The heterozygous is also a different new genotype, and it's kind of like a mixing of the homozygous genotypes or phenotypes. But remember, this is kind of like uh, Dalmatians would show this too. In Dalmatians, the coat color in Dalmatians, here's my dog, and imagine that's black and white instead. Terrible example. But the hairs that make the black spots in Dalmatians are completely black in color. And the hairs that make the white coat in between the spots are completely white. It sounds pretty goofy if I asked you, hey, what color is a Dalmatian? And your answer would be, well, it's black and white. Oh, so it's gray. Not in codominance. So you've now learned two additional gene interactions in addition to complete dominance. You've got incomplete dominance and remember that that is a true mixing of the traits. There will always be an intermediate phenotype. That means red plus white is going to be pink. In codominance, that means that both the red and the white would be completely expressed in the organism.